Hello everyone, welcome back to Physics HQ. This is Professor Sandeep, your tutor for the class 11 series. Continuing with the class 11th lecture series for solving sums, today we'll be covering the second part of textbook Unsolved Sums of chapter 1, Units and Measurement. If you have not gone through the part 1 of this chapter, please have a look. So let us go ahead with the first MCQ. A object is falling freely under the gravitational force. Its velocity after traveling a distance h is v. If v depends upon gravitational acceleration g and distance, prove with dimensional analysis that v is equal to k root of gh where k is constant. So what we'll do is we'll find out the dimensions of these things individually. Velocity ka unit is meter per second. So the dimension is l1 t minus 1 because seconds is in denominator when you bring it in numerator it will become minus one g is having unit meter per second square this is acceleration due to gravity right and this will give us dimension as l1 t raised to minus 2 and lastly we have distance h which will have unit meter so we got l1 over here now let us assume that v is directly proportional to this g and h and we don't know the powers of g and h so let us take a variable a for g and b for h our job over here is to find the values of a and b now if we remove the proportionality sign we have this constant k g raised to a h raised to b now what we'll do is in this equation we'll be putting all the dimensions so we have velocity ke jage pe l1 t raised to minus 1 this is equal to k g ke jage pe we'll be putting l1 t raised to minus 2 h ke jage pe we'll be putting l raised to 1 now g ka power is a and h ka power is b now let us multiply this the powers inside so we got l a t raised to minus 2 a and this will be l raised to b now let us try to club this what we'll get this is l raised to a over here and l raised to b so combining this we can write l raised to a plus b likewise we have t raised to minus 2 a so we'll write it like this let us compare things on the left hand side and on the right hand side okay now since k is constant it won't have any dimension dimensions on the left and right side should match so when you compare left hand side and right hand side the powers of l should match so what i can write is a plus b should be equal to one this is the first equation that we got from length and from time what we have is minus 2a is equal to minus one so what I can write is 2a is equal to 1 or I can write a is equal to half. Now if a is equal to half, I can put this value over here. So what I will get is half plus b is equal to 1. That means b is equal to 1 minus half which is again half. Okay. So let us put the values of a and b in this equation that we have written over here. We will get v is equal to k g raised to half and h raised to half. Now let me tell you 1 by 2 is nothing but square root n. Okay, so what we can write is root of g h over here. So we have proved this by dimensional analysis. I hope you all understood this. Let us go ahead. Now we have an equation over here. Let me write it down over here. V is equal to a t plus b upon t plus c plus v0. Okay, it's a dimensionally valid equation. You have to obtain the dimensional formula for a, b, and c. They have given v is velocity, t is time, and v0 is initial velocity. Okay, now always remember all the terms over here will be having same dimensions. So if I have velocity which is having unit meter per second, will have dimension l1 t raised to minus 1. So do this term a t over here. Now, AT may what we have is we have one component as time, dusra wala component we don't know, right? So, what we can write is AT will have same dimension as what velocity has, and the dimension will be given as L1 T minus 1. Now, what we'll do is we will put T on the other side, so we got L1 T minus 1 divided by time. Now, this time will have dimension t raised to 1. Let us take it in the numerator, what it will become? It will become L raised to 1 t raised to minus 2 so over here we got the dimension of a which is l1 t raised to minus 2 okay let us go ahead and talk about the other terms now let us observe this term b upon t plus c okay so b upon t plus c this term is also having same dimension l1 t minus 1 now before solving this let us observe the denominator over here 
the denominator is given as t plus c where t is time and c is variable jiska hame dimension nikalna hai now once again always remember whenever you have terms added together they will be having same dimensions it's like we have over here at and the second term and this third term they are all having same dimensions so likewise second term ka denominator mein jo ye do term hai t and c they will be having same dimensions now we know that time is having dimension t raised to 1 so c will also have dimension t raised to 1 so from this we got c ka dimension as l raised to 0 m raised to 0 t raised to 1 okay now let us come back to the second part so from this we came to know that denominator mein dono term is having dimensions of time and what we can do is we can write this as t raised to 1 okay and this is equal to l1 t minus 1 now let us go ahead and put this t on the other side b is equal to l1 t minus 1 into t1 left hand side ka denominator se us baaju jayega to numerator mein chala jayega now this t raised to 1 and t raised to minus 1 will cancel out each other and what we will be left with l raised to 1 so b is having this dimension l raised to 1 in books you will find they also write it as m0 and t0 it is fine both are correct hope you all understood this let us go ahead to the next sum the length breadth and thickness of a rectangular sheet is given give the area and volume of the sheet to correct significant figures now to find area area ka formula is simply length into breadth now length is given over here as 4.234 meter and breadth is 1.005 meter so let us multiply this and calculate the area the area over here comes out to be 4.25517 meter square okay so this becomes the area and then we need to find out the volume volume will be area into the thickness over here area we just now found out 4.25517 thickness over here is given as 2.01 cm we will convert this into meter so it will become 2.01 into 10 raised to minus 2 okay now when we multiply this we will get something 4 to the 8 8 point something so you Precise answer we will get is 8.56 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter cube. Let us go ahead to the next sum. If the length of the cylinder is 4 with an error of 0.001, radius is 0.0250 with an error of 0.001, mass is 6.25 with an error of 0.01. Calculate the percentage error in the determination of density over here. density is given by mass into volume and volume of cylinder is given by the formula pi r square h so if you see we have multiplication over here so to find the percentage error we'll be using relative errors over here so delta d by d into 100 will be equal to delta m by m into 100 plus 2 times delta r by r into 100 we have seen this in last last video that why this 2 comes over here and then we have this delta h upon h into 100 let us put the values and we'll take 100 common so delta m is how much 0.01 divided by 6.25 plus 2 times delta r delta r is 0.001 divided by 0.025 plus delta h is 0.001 divided by 4 this entire thing into 100 will give us the answer now we can try to simplify this we can write 1 upon 625 so we multiplied by 100 in numerator and denominator over here we can have 2 upon 25 we will keep this as it is 0.001 divided by 4 okay into 100 now this 25 and 625 ka we can take lcm and we will get 625 Over here we will have 1 plus. यहाँ पे we will be multiplying by 25 to get 625, so it will be 50 plus 0.001 divided by 4 into 100. Now this can be written as 51 upon 625 plus 0.001 divided by 4. we can cross multiply this and 51 into 4 will give us 204 cross multiplying over here will give us 0.625 divided by 625 into 4 will be 2500 into 100 so we can cancel out this two zeros over here what we will be left with is 204.625 divided by 25 
now this is a division by 25 we can do it easily so we got 25 8s are 200 then we got 46 25 ones are 25 we got 21 212 so again we can have 8s and uh, 125 is 5 okay so we got 8.185 percent over here I tried to simplify this if you uh, found this useful simplification you can do with this method or you can go with log let us go ahead when the planet Jupiter is at a distance of 824.7 million kilometer from the earth its angular diameter is measured to be 35.72 minutes of hour calculate the diameter of the Jupiter let us say this is the Jupiter we are on the earth over here this is the diameter that we need to calculate alpha we already got how much 35.72 and this distance is already known okay so we can use this formula d is equal to alpha d that we use in circles also s equal to r theta wala formula now alpha over here if you see the angle is not given in radians so what we need to do is we need to convert this into radians first so alpha that we have over here is 35.72 minutes and we need to convert this into radians and this is done by multiplying this 35.72 with 4.817 into 10 raised to minus 6. Now this will convert it into radians. I would suggest that you use a logbook over here to solve this. So the answer will be 1.73 into 10 raised to minus 4 radians. Okay. And distance that we have over here is 8 to 4.7 million, which is 10 raised to 6 kilometer. We will convert this into meter. So this is the value that we have 8 to 4.7 into 10 raised to 9 meter. Now let us find out the value of D by putting it in this formula. Alpha small d is equal to alpha capital D. Alpha we got it as 1.73 into 10 raised to minus 4. Capital D is 824.7 into 10 raised to 9. Once again, I will recommend to use log over here. If you want to learn how to use logbook for solving sums easily, please click on the i icon on the top right to check out the video. When we multiply this, we will get 1.428 into 10 raised to 8 meter. We can convert this into kilometer also. So this will be 10 raised to 5 kilometer. I hope you all understood this. Let us go ahead with the next sum. Now if the formula of a physical quantity x is given as a raised to 4, b raised to 3 divided by c raised to 1 by 3 and d raised to 1 by 2 then the percentage error and if the percentage error of a, b, c, d is given as 2%, 3%, 3% and 4% respectively calculate percentage error in x. So over here we will be using the formula for relative error. So delta x upon x into 100 will give us percentage error. This will be equal to delta a upon a and this will be multiplied by the power of a to get the relative error into 100 plus 3 into delta b by b into 100 plus 1 by 3 into delta c upon c into 100 plus 1 by 2 into delta d upon d into 100. Now try and understand this delta a upon a is relative error and this delta a upon a in 200 is nothing but percentage error which is already given as 2%. So what I'll do is I'll put the values over here 4 into 2. Likewise percentage error for b is denoted by delta b by b into 100. So we got 3 into 3. Similarly putting it for c we got 1 by 3 into 3 and lastly we got 1 by 2 into 4. So this will cancel out and we'll be left with 1 this will give us 2 so let us add it up so you got 4 2 is 8 3 3 is 9 1 and 2 so 8 plus 9 is 17 plus 1 18 plus 2 20 percent let us go ahead write down the number of significant figures so 0 0.003 meter square in this we have only one significant figure okay always remember the rule decimal point ke pehle aur baat ke jitne bhi zeros they are not significant and this applies only for numbers which are less than 1. There are 4 rules given in the textbook. Please go through it. Next we have 0 0.1250. Over here we got 4 significant figures. Remember this any 0 after this numbers is also significant. So we got 4 numbers 1, 2, 5 and 0 all are significant. This is also one of the rules. Next we have 6.4 into 10 raised to 6. So over here we got 2 significant numbers those are 6 and 4 then we have 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 again we got two numbers 1 and 6 
and lastly we have 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31 and again we got two numbers which are significant over here which are 9 and 1. Hope you all understood this let us go ahead. The diameter of the sphere is 2.14 so if diameter is 2.14 centimeter we will have radius as 1.07 centimeter half of it. Calculate the volume of the sphere to the correct number of significant figures. So volume is given by the formula 4 by 3 pi r cube. Let us put the values over here 4 by 3 into pi is 3.142 into r ka value is 1.07 the whole raised to 3. I will recommend this to be solved by the logbook. Once you solve this by the logbook you will get the answer as 5.13 centimeter cube. Hope you all understood this. Thank you for your time. If you are finding this lecture series useful then show us your appreciation by clicking on the like button and don't forget to share with your friends and classmates. As you know based on your feedbacks and suggestions we will be covering key concepts under our 5 minute lecture series of class 11th. So please feel free to let us know the topics you want us to cover. See you all in the next class. This is Professor Sandeep from Physics HQ signing off.